afternoon, good morning to everybody around the world. Uh, my name is Kenan Arnautovic, and I would like to appreciate to send my sincere appreciation to Professor Sameh Morsi Hassan, who put this uh, heroic uh, effort uh, and uh, put together this fantastic uh, seminar. Uh, I'm in another meeting, so I came out and I couldn't miss this presentation. And I also congratulate Sameh for uh, Vice chairing our WFNS Oncology uh, 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 Committee. So basically, uh, I'm going to talk to uh, things that I do very much, and this is one of my uh, uh, dear and near uh, surgeries, uh, surgeries of anterior cloning meningioma. Um, uh, we all in, in, uh, encounter in our practice this uh, enormous giant uh, tumors and uh, uh, I wanted to share with you some of my concepts of their treatment and uh, some of my uh, results. So um, one of the main thing is uh, uh, that these tumors uh, alter the vision. So uh, these are clinoidal meningiomas, other meningiomas also can do that, pituitary adenomas, craniopharyngiomas. And how do they alter the vision? By direct compression, by vascular impairment and combination. So, so there are certain uh, points of tethering of the optic nerve, such as the arachnoid membrane, false form ligament, bony optic canal, and anterior clinoid. So we need to concentrate on this area of tethering while removing the, the tumor. So in order to do that, I set specific steps uh, that I do for this kind of lesions. First of all, I do craniorbital craniotomy and pretemporal approach to get me to the anterior clinoid. Uh, laterally and 360 degrees. I remove the floor and the lateral wall posteriorly of the orbit. I open the superior orbital fissure. I open the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus. I remove the anterior clinoid, open of uh, arachnoid cistern and CSF release. And then finally, we open the false form ligament and mobilize the optic nerve. So this is just quickly the position of the patient, the incision and the craniotomy. This is a uh, removal of roof and lateral wall of the orbit that we uh, uh, may reconstruct uh, or not, depending on the size of posterior aspect of the resection. This is the opening of the lateral wall, the cavern of sinus. This is a gel foam powder balls that we use. And then external clinidectomy that Professor Almefti has told all of us. And then Professor Yashagil told us how to open the arachnoid cisterns and uh, chiasmal cistern release CSF. And then finally open this uh, uh, false form ligament to detether the optic nerve that's being displaced up, upward before we start any dissection. We need team and equipment, nothing without the equipment. We cannot fly without a plane. So we need to use monitoring and all other uh, important gadgets. Uh, we use also progressive length of uh, Professor Yashagil's bipolars, progressive length of scissors, and of course, controlled suction. Uh, pot scissors will uh, uh, enable you no, no, uh, to avoid any uh, injuries to the cortex while door opening. So what is the outcome of uh, patients uh, and resection rate uh, re in regard to vision? So the studies looked only 6% of the studies that looked into this included anterior clinoid. So we can, we can say that they are uh, un unclear was the current state of the, of the, uh, 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 outcomes of opt optic nerves. What we can state is the resection state, uh, resection rate, gross old resection is only 66%. And then uh, obviously uh, what, what, what is clear from the literature review is patient do not, uh, I mean, uh, uh, authors do not report any visual symptoms and outcomes in patients uh, in 20% uh, or they do incomplete uh, reporting. So when you, when we, uh, collect all of these numbers, uh, majority of the studies have absolutely no or partially no uh, regard regarding optic nerve uh, results and visual uh, results after surgery. And then uh, look at this, only about 60% of patients get uh, improved after surgery. So the question is with 66% uh, of uh, gross total resection rate and 58% of uh, improvement of vision, should we operate on this patient? Uh, should we subject them to surgery when we cannot promise them fairly high a level of success with visual outcomes? So uh, I'll just go over some of the cases that I've done over the several years. 
and a few technical uh, components. First, there is a patient 33 years old with this uh, small planetal meningioma, severe retroorbital pain and headaches. Uh, we uh, open the superior orbital fissure uh, uh, by cutting, uh, coagulating and cutting the meningo uh, orbital artery and then peel off the uh, lateral wall of the coronal sinus, as you can see here. Here you can see now we are exposing the second and the third nerve, and that will get us uh, uh, approaching the anterior clinoid appropriately. Here now you can see we are decompressing the optic nerve and removing the clinoid, which is first step of our uh, decompression of the optic nerve. And then we have to uh, open the dura, of course. And as you see, I learned from Professor Oliveira, I open it very low, almost close to the uh, uh, optic nerve and chiasm. The next thing, we open the cistern here, we identify carotid artery, and then start opening the arachnoid membrane. As I said, this is the second point of detethering. So removing the clinoid, opening of the optic canal, uh, uh, opening of the arachnoid membrane, and then of course, devascularizing the tumor and, and removing it. And then the final uh, part, here I'm coagulating the dura over the uh, falciform ligament and then using the hook and the 11 blade, you see how the falciform uh, ligament is open and optic nerve completely uh, uh, released from any uh, compression. This is the final view of the surgery. You can see here, this is the distal ring. This is the carotid artery. Here is the extradural carotid artery where we can do the temporary clipping if needed, complete tumor resection. The other case also, this is postoperative gross total resection. You can see here on the CT scan, completely decompress optic nerve and remove clinoid. Another case, this is more unplugged tumor, so we need to uh, remove also adjacent dura. You can see here the visual loss. Here is again the same technique, meningo orbital artery, uh, coagulated and divided, opening of the uh, lateral wall of the sinus. And then very important thing is to use, uh, this is opening of the lateral uh, wall of the, posterior lateral wall of the orbit, and then superior wall. This is now opening of the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus. And you can see here, V1, V2. Uh, while drilling, you, can, you, you have to use copious amounts of irrigation. And you can see this clinoid is ridden with the tumor. So it took more time to drill it, but you have to drill it to decrease uh, the, the volume of it so you can safely uh, the compressed now the optic nerve. Uh, you have to use uh, the biggest size of kerosene is one millimeter. And of course, you have to drill down the bone to nothing while protecting the nerve. So I will just, you see now the optic nerve completely decompressed, but we have to remove the uh, remaining parts of the bone infiltrated by the tumor. You can see here the carotid artery genu where we can nicely put the clip if, God forbid, uh, we need to. Finally, opening of the dura. There is one of the branch coming from the carotid artery frequently, which we uh, have to divide if we see it. Here is opening of the uh, arachnoid membrane. And again, decompressing the optic nerve from inside. Here's opening of the false form ligament, as I showed in the previous case. Uh, finally, opening a little bit more with uh, scissors, which we can also use. And then resection of the dura, uh, which involves the tumor. Uh, 
to achieve the gross total resection. So this all needs to be resected and this is gross total resection. You can see nice the compression and uh, complete resection. This is another case, small tumor on the left side, blurred vision and double vision because third nerve was compressed and you can see postoperative result. How about the giant ones? You, this is a patient 54 years old with uh, right hemiparesis. She had ipsilateral IC occlusion and clinoid meningioma that is giant wrapping around the anterior clinoid. You can see here gross total resection and good outcome. Another case with left-sided uh, giant clinoid meningioma wrapping the carotid, wrapping the bifurcation. MCA goes over the tumor and uh, resection of the tumor leaving a small piece on the pituitary stalk. We did not want to jeopardize the pituitary stalk that was the eye in this young woman. So, so this is stable for a few years now, did not change. Another case, a patient presented with complete blindness, giant right-sided, uh, complete blindness on the right side, the gross total resection, and you can see here uh, improvement of the vision almost 75% on the right side. This is a giant left-sided uh, clinoidal meningioma on this man with mild pronator drift, uh, memory problems and visual problems. Uh, I'm just gonna show you main elements here well, after opening of the dura. It was immediately noted that this tumor does not have a good plane. Uh, there is some invasion. So we had to develop that. This is temporal lobe. We went and advanced to the frontal lobe here. And you can see here is the plane between the bone and the tumor. Again, further advancing it. Very important point at this point is to identify distal M3 branches. So once we identify distal M3 branches, we know where, where they are. We start uh, debulking the tumor. We use CUSA, we use the uh, uh, bipolar and scissors, and then we start slowly advancing towards the anterior part, which is very important to identify the proximal carotid artery. So here they are. You can see here internal carotid artery, A1 optic nerve, and you can see here that we are uh, uh, kind of progressing with dissection down the uh, middle cerebral artery. And we can see the hint of bifurcation right here, right there. And then, now I know where is my proximal M1. I know where is bifurcation. I know where is distal. And now we need just to proceed with the bulking of the tumor and uh, removing the tumor completely. But remember, this is a left side. Any injury to the middle cerebral artery remains, uh, 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 will, will, will make this patient uh, hemiplegic and aphasic for the rest of his life. So we have to debulk the tumor. We have to remove it to completely eliminate the tension because it's not safe to dissect the tumor uh, while uh, 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 it's under tension on the artery. Here's the bifurcation area. And this is the most complex part of surgery because you see MCA bifurcation, we need to use the opening spring of the, uh, of the bipolar to dissect it of bifurcation. And you see tumor is completely wrapping the bifurcation. Uh, and uh, again, you can see here, this is a superior branch. This is inferior branch. And then we are now dividing the tumor into two parts. Uh, and then uh, basically here is the final uh, artery going into the tumor, uh, early temporal branch, which we divided. And here is the bifurcation completely preserved with uh, gross total resection. Patient is doing well. Another case of giant uh, right-sided clinical meningioma, again, wrapping and everything else. If there is no plane, you see we did resection with small piece of tumor around the MCA, I mean, uh, internal carotid artery bifurcation. If there is no good plane between the tumor and the artery, you should not insist. You should not insist in removing the tumor because that can uh, endanger uh, and uh, make a hole in the artery. And then both you and more patient uh, is in trouble. Another case with a fairly large uh, meningioma on the left side, you can see here preoperative clinoid. I always inspect the clinoids to see how large they are, how much involvement with the tumor. See here resection. Another case, uh, eight years old woman 
Age really doesn't matter. If you do the technique properly, you have a good outcome, gross total resection, improvement of vision, and, uh, and, 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 and basically patient doing well. So eight years old, uh, giant tumor resected well. Another case with the uh, altered vision, you can see here spots uh, of uh, uh, blind spots uh, in the visual field. You can see, and I'm going just to go briefly through this uh, through this case, uh, just so salient. Now, in this case, you cannot do the early uh, the early uh, opening of the uh, false form ligament because the tumor is uh, coming in front uh, on the top of it. So first, what we do again, this is orbital segment of the second nerve. This is a removal of the clinoid and opening of the optic uh, canal. We use again a drill with irrigation. We keep drilling and uh, slowly progressing. We use this uh, one millimeter kerosene once we have a good uh, thin down uh, elements of the bone uh, and strut. And now you see the clinoid tip coming into the view and removed. Now we are going to look for the intracranial, the optic nerve, and you can see it here coming into the view and completely open optic nerve canal. You can see it here. And uh, uh, just a little bit more. And the optic nerve is the compressed the clinoid is out. So we proceed with the tumor resection. You can see here we opened distally and found the MCA bifurcation. We found uh, here the uh, uh, bifurcation of uh, internal carotid artery M1A1. And then now we are going to start debulking the tumor. So not each tumor using stealth, not each tumor is the same. You need to adjust to the anatomy of the tumor relationship to blood vessels and optic nerve. So we need to debulk the tumor before we reach to the uh, to the proximal artery. So we debulked enough to find the artery, A1, uh, internal carotid. And now we are going to remove the remaining of the tumor here on the top of the clinoid to be able to decompress completely the optic nerve and open the false form ligament. But more importantly, the dissecting between the plane of the tumor and carotid artery you can see now beautifully PCOM and anterior choroidal coming into the view. And then here, final resection of the tumor. Here's the third nerve coming below the uh, carotid artery. And then uh, almost final anatomy. While using the CUSA, make sure, this is my chief resident using the CUSA. You see, I'm protecting her with, uh, with the dissector. And here is the final anatomy, a resection of the tumor almost completed. And then once we decompress the tumor enough, we are now able to open the false form ligament and completely free the optic nerve. And then remove the remaining uh, uh, tumor on the, on the dura. We took particular time to clean the dura. So uh, you see here, gross total resection with the patient doing well, unchanged uh, vision. This small spot remains, but uh, we preserved it. So in conclusion, we can say the craniorbital for temporal transcavernous approach uh, with opening of superior orbital fissure, partial removal of the uh, orbital uh, roof and lateral wall and clinoid opening of the false form ligament help release tension and relax the optic nerve, chiasm, and orbital structures. It enables easier anterior clinoid uh, meningioma resection by improving maneuverability and increasing the section spaces. It helps to maintain and improve the impaired vision. It enables radical surgical resection, helps preserve pituitary gland and pituitary hormones, which is very important for the quality of life of the patient and find, uh, finally enables proximal ICA control. Well, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thanks a lot, uh, Professor Kenan, for this excellent presentation.
Is there any question for Mavalis? Can you hear me? Am I uh, allowed to ask a question? Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, yes. Go ahead, Davino. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, it's a nice presentation, Dr. Kenan. Can I Thank ask you, you a much. few questions? Yes, please. Well, first question is, uh, do you go for pre-operative embolization to these cases, to the huge, uh, this one, glenoral meningiomas, number first? <laughs> number second, do you go for lumbar drain pre-operatively on the op in the operation theater itself? And uh, and and uh, do you use uh, or uh, do you uh, take the assistance of uh, endoscopic vision onto the uh, retro portion of uh, just near the bifurcation of MCA? So do I use embolization? I have never used embolization because I know exactly where is the vascularization coming from. I, as I showed, intercepted early and I don't have any significant blood loss uh, so far in the past 21 years. So uh, I have seen two cases of my partners when I was on call who did the preoperative embolization of meningiomas and then the necrosis happens overnight and I was in the middle of the night at two o'clock in the morning doing the very sophisticated surgery which was painful for me painful for everybody in the hospital and um, i personally don't do embolization i don't say it's wrong but i, I really don't need it do i use the endoscope absolutely we have endoscope uh, with the microscope we have independent endoscope on the on the field so whenever i need it i use it um, for this location we don't need it very much because as you saw we bring everything to the surface, but yes, I use it all the time as I, as much as I need. And uh, what was the embolization endoscope? There was a third question. I, I'm sorry, I, I forgot. Yeah, that was the, the use of lumbar drain. Uh -huh. The use of lumbar drain for intracranial surgery can be done. I've used it once or twice, but usually, you know, when you open the uh, internal carotid artery cistern, release the CSF uh, uh, I I don't think you you use it very uh, and you need it very often you also have opportunity to put an EVD if you need uh, so I keep it all, all that option open I don't do it very frequently and um, as I said usually you can get away very nice relaxation of the okay, brain with and, uh, and, uh, and just after the operation do you use pepperberine for uh, saving the vasospasm of MCS. Yes, if I notice that the uh, artery is becoming vasospastic, uh, I do use papaverin on the pledget. I put it in the uh, Professor Yasha will told us to, to put it about 20, 30 seconds on the blood vessel. You need to give time for papaverin to work. So yes, I use it if I see that I need it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kennedy. Thank you, thank sir. You. Appreciate it. Thank you. Is there any other question? Thank you, Buf. Sam, Sam, can I ask something? Okay, okay. Hello, Professor. Excellent talk. Very nice uh, demonstration of uh, clinoidal meningiomas and superbly done. Uh, uh, I, I just has the two, three queries. One, suppose an artery of middle cerebral artery is going through the tumor and how do you dissect it out means you have a proximal control and then there are perforators also going into the tumor how do you preserve that or you leave a cuff of tumor around the artery that is the first thing second thing about the devascularizing the tumor on the medial side of the tumor how do you do because many a times by this stereonal approach we are not able to see the medial end of the tumor so what is your view on this? And do you always go for a uh, total resection or a near total resection? What do you do to the residual tumor? Thank you. 
So uh, first is uh, arteries. Middle cerebral, this is very difficult uh, when the tumor, I showed you the case with giant meningioma completely encircling MCA bifurcation. And as you saw, I go for gross total resection. I never uh, before surgery say, oh, I'm gonna just biopsy this. Of course, I showed you the case where, where there was no good plane. So I left the tumor completely devascularized, less than one centimeter, and it has been dormant for years. So um, mo many times you can have the plane, but you have to have, I first established in this uh, meningiomas first distal control and then proximal control. So I can put the clip, I can do the, uh, you know, a repair of the artery if need, God forbid, uh, bypass, whatever. So, so then never dissect the tumor when it's under tension. So if you have big bulk on the tumor on the small MCA, never dissect and force. You have to decompress the tumor relax. I showed uh, scientifically on the optic nerve, if you decompress the optic nerve before surgery, it's much better uh, outcome than, after, than if you don't. Same is with the artery. If you decompress the tumor and artery is relaxed, it's easier to dissect than when the artery is under displacement and pressure. And again, you know, uh, I'm not hazard there. If I see that a tumor that doesn't have a good plane, there is MCA bifurcation involving the perforators, going lenticulostriate arteries and all that. I would rather leave a small, small piece of the tumor on rather than force uh, neurological deficit. Medially, how do you take the tumor out, devascularize that area? So, so on clinoid meningiomas, their origin is on the top of the dura of the clinoid. And then it's on the uh, lateral aspect of the sphenoid. So it encircles the carotid artery. So first step that you do for devascularization, remove the clinoid. Once you remove the clinoid extradurally, you took away significant part of the tumor. The other artery you saw at the beginning, many orbital artery, you have to coagulate and divide it. It's also significantly contributing to the vascularization. So once you take the uh, many orbital dural artery, and take the anterior clinoid, you already got significant devascularization of the tumor. A lot of people do pterional approach, open the dura, and all the vascularization is coming into the tumor while you start dissecting and you see the bloody mess. You gotta intercept the vascularization as much as possible before you open the dura. That's why you don't need embolization. Your bipolar is embolizing the tumor uh, just before you open the dura. You, as you saw before I showed, you can get to the dura all the way down to the optic nerve, which we decompress. So all the dura behind it can be coagulated if you see any blood vessel intercepted, so you devascularize the tumor early. Right. Even we don't believe in uh, embolization. And whenever I, we had done I, 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 my technique, uh, with my technique, which I learned from my mentor, Professor Almefti, did not need it. I don't think, I never say never in medicine, never say never in neurosurgery, but uh, I, I don't think with this technique you, knows to, you need to use it. But again, you know, I, I, I'm not saying I'll never use it. I'm not going to find a case where I will uh, need it. But so far in 20 years and dozens and dozens of these cases that I operated, uh, I did not uh, use it so far. And we... I agree, we have to be subarachnoid in our dissection. We have to separate out the arachnoid from the tumor and then start debulking after devascularizing. Otherwise, we can lose the plane. It's very Absolutely. important. These are also tumor subarachnoid. Yeah. Thank you. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you, Booster. Thank you. I'm going back to the conference. All the best, and I wish I you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.